moving in the positive direction. These values are also congruent. And since in the positive and negative directions we have both of the exact same values, these cancel each other out. So the only movement in this problem, or the only net charge in this problem, is right here in the positive x direction. And so from here, all we have to do is um, after we, we take all of these forces, so all of the x forces, so we've got 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs plus 4.525 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and then plus that again and I'm just going to do that because I don't want to write the whole thing out and we're going to set this equal to a big Q because what the problem is asking for is the force on the final charge. What we found is the charge or the, the net charge that is acting on this center point. From here, what we need to do is use the equation K big Q little q over radius squared is equal to the electrostatic force. And so what we do is we just plug all of these in and so substitute. Once again, K is 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meter squared over coulomb squared times 1.5 five four five times ten to the negative eighteen and that's just because we added all of those together and once again I am running out of room I really need to find a better way of writing all this stuff out there we go and so then that's also coulombs my mistake for not putting that unit there and then we've also got the small q which is three point two times ten to the negative nineteen coulombs over and then the radius which is 0.1 meters and so that's squared. So when all that's said and done the answer you should come out with is 4.45 times 10 to the negative 25 newtons. Now there actually is another way that you could do this. What you could do is find the electrostatic force by just using these two values and using the radius. You find the electrostatic force that all of these are exerting on this instead of finding the charge that they're using, that they're exerting. Either way, you're going to end up with the same answer. This is just the way that I did it, but basically all the other thing is doing is instead of finding the charges, it's finding the, um, the electrostatic force. All right, so now we're going to move on to question number seven. All right, so now we're going to do number seven. Now, I'm sorry that this tutorial is running a little long, but hopefully it's all making sense to you guys. So in this, we're given a square that has four point charges of an equal magnitude, and what we're supposed to find is the electric field at point P, which is the point right at the center of the square. These two points, point Q1 and Q4, are positive, and points Q2 and Q3 are negative. And so, in our givens, we are going to say that Q is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs because that is the magnitude of these four point charges. We're told that the side length of this is, which is it's given the variable name A in the problem 
And so we're going to say that A is equal to 0.1 meters. It's given in centimeters. It's 10 centimeters. But for the purpose of using this problem, we're going to be using meters. And so we know that half of this, half of this distance, we're just going to say, let's just call this B for the heck of it. So let's just say B is equal to 0 0.05 meters because it's 5 centimeters. Okay, and um, so now for our unknown, we're trying to find E, which is the electrical field at this point. And so for our equation, we're going to be using a bunch of different things. We're going to be using some of the stuff we used in the last problem, number six, with the cosines and sines. We're also going to be using a new equation. So let's just dive right in. And so first thing I think that we actually should do is do a uh, free body diagram. And so all of these forces are somehow in relation to the center. These two are positive forces, so they are going to be pushing in one direction while the negative forces are pulling in the other direction. And so we're going to say that all of these have a x component, so an x component, and they have a y component. And would you look at that? We've got another right triangle. And since this is the center of our square, that's a 45 degree angle, and that is a 45 degree angle. So now I hope you can see how this is like the last problem. And so in our free body diagram, we're going to put the x and y component of Q1. So the x component of Q1 is pushing, it's pushing in that direction. And so we're going to have a little arrow going that way. And it's also pushing in a downward direction, so we're going to have a little arrow pointing that way. And so that's... I'll just put Q1 and Q1. Then we've got Q4, which is also pushing in this direction, but it's pushing upward. So we've got Q4 and Q4. And these two are identical because they're both the same magnitude and they're both going to the same point which is the same distance from both of them. Then we're going to do Q2. Q2 is pulling the center in this direction and upward. So we've got a little arrow for Q2 and a little arrow for Q2. Also a little extra thing these two values are congruent as well. Now Q3 is pulling toward it and down. So Q3 is here and is pulling down. Now all of these values are the same so actually these four values are all the same so it's just four of one value. And since these values are the same and they're in opposite directions and they're all equal, they cancel out. So what we're left with is a charge only in the x direction. The equation that we're going to be using is a new one. And so if you look on your equation sheet, you'll see one that says E is equal to K big Q over R squared. And so what that means is that the electric field is equal to K times whatever charge is acting on that field divided by however far away that charge is and then that's squared. 
And so you may be asking yourself, well, we have, we know what the charge is, but we don't know exactly what the number is, and we also don't know the exact distance from each of these points all the way to the center. So first things first, let's just find the distance from one of the points to the center. And so if it's a triangle like this, with this being the center and this being one of the points, each of these, this side and this side, are each the same value and this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle that we found. And so each of these is half of the total length of a side on the square and so they're each 0 0.05 meters. For those of you who know geometry and know the shortcut, you can already guess at what the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is square root of 2.05 meters. If you want to go about that the long way, you can use cosines or sines in order to find that. I'm just going to use the shortcut because hopefully you guys already knew that. And so we know what R is, and now we need to find what the actual charge is. Well, all of these charges have a charge of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19. But what we really need to do is find the x component because the total charge is what is acting along the hypotenuse, but not is what is acting on in the x and the y directions. So just like last problem, we're going to have cosine of 45 is equal to the x charge over the hypotenuse charge. So if we were to multiply that, we'd end up with the hypotenuse times cosine 45 is equal to the x charge. So to substitute those in, we've got 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times cosine of 45. And if you were to multiply those together, you would get 4.53 times 10 to the negative 19. And so if we look up here, each one of these individual charges is equal to this value, and that's a coulombs. So in order to find the total force in the x direction, we're going to just take this and multiply it by 4. Sorry. And that gives us 1.81 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. Well, now that we have our distance, which is this, and we have our charge, and we already know K, we can solve for the electric field. So the S, we've got K, which is 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meters squared over coulombs squared times 1.81 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs over 0 0.05 root 2 meters squared. And the answer that that gives us is 3.26 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons over coulombs. And that is the final answer. So now we're just going to keep on moving. In this problem, we're told that there is a proton in a particle beam that is moving with a certain kinetic energy and that we are supposed to find an electric field that will cause this proton to come to a complete stop within a certain distance. And so uh, for our givens, we are given its kinetic energy, which is 3.25 times 10 to the negative 15 joules. In addition to that, we are told that it is supposed to stop in 